Well, uh, here we are at Astrofest uh, 2017 with uh, with Joseph on the left and Ed on the right. Hi guys, looking forward to it. Yes, yeah, yes, looking forward to it. Forward to always. it. <laughs> as always. Are you expecting anything new? Well, good lectures as always. Uh, I'm looking around for some bargains once again, but uh, looking around for an old house mount and some two-inch lenses. So hopefully we'll get some good good prices on them. A man with money. <laughs> and Joseph, this is your first time. Yes. So what, what are you looking forward to? Uh, uh, just looking forward to the conference. <laughs> just the to conference. start with. That's great. Great presentation. Oh, we're here. It's uh, the beginning of the first day. The queue's building up. We've got a, a typical post-Brexit British weather in Kensington High Street and uh, hopefully it's going to be a great conference. Uh, I'm here with Joseph. For those who don't know Joseph, Joseph uh, is a good friend of mine who I've met up for many years. He used to live in the same residence in, uh, in London and uh, um, he uh, actually works London Underground. But uh, he decided to come along to Astor Fest to find out what was the topic that was about. And he's interested in buying himself a telescope. Uh, so I think he's found the one that he wants to buy. This, this little beast here. He thinks this might be nice and portable and just uh, fit into his flat so he can pop outside with it from time to time. Uh, is this what you really want, Joseph? Maybe some, something bigger. Something bigger? Oh, right, okay. <laughs> oh, something a bit over there. Oh, the other one. What's the other one over there? Oh, yes, is that there? The Ryan Optics Platinum. I can see it's back over there. I mean, uh, the counterweights here would take you uh, an army of people to carry around, wouldn't they? Incredible. I mean, you've been commenting on the cost of it. A little, 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 little crane to carry it. <laughs> now, as a, as a newcomer to the, to the world of astronomy, uh, Joseph, and having looked around the, uh, the, the Astrofest so far right, on the first morning, uh, what do you think of the prices of astronomy? Uh, do they seem reasonable to you? Is something you can afford? Or what do you reckon? Some are affordable, some are more expensive, less affordable. Mm. So do you think maybe stuff is a, a bit overpriced for people trying to get into the hobby for the first time? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I think you must be polite. But, uh, yeah, also, also I need to ask an uh, expert like you before I make any wise decision. That's a good point, it's not very expensive. You might want to get some advice from someone who's learning when it comes to that. Anyway, thanks very much. Well, so, uh, so, Joseph, I think that would suit you in your flat. Actually, I think that would be just about right for you. What, what do you reckon? Near the balcony. <laughs> Sorry? Near the balcony. A balcony, yes, yeah, in a big balcony. Actually, they weigh an absolute ton. I had a, a big pair of binoculars, not as big as that, but a big pair once, and uh, sold it again because I just couldn't carry the thing. So I think, Joseph, I think it suits you really well. It's a new look for you. What do you think? Good yeah. Help you. Look at the light sky with those. Yeah. Look, look uh, quite uh, clear actually. <coughs> Magnify a few times. <laughs> I've caught Ed here spending money. I don't know if Lillian knows about this. <laughs> she does. But there we are, the card machine coming out. And what has he found? We've got uh, optical vision up here. And he's uh, found himself an eyepiece. One of the uh, sky panoramas. Can you just Skywatcher. check the price and, and see your pin, please? Price down from 129 to 75. Okay. We're in a wide angle eyepiece, that's right, isn't it? That's right, yep. Yeah. Have a go with your different scopes. So I'm here with uh, Alan Buckman at the AWR Technology Stand. Hi Alan, nice to see you. Good morning. Oh, <laughs> and uh, hope you have a great Astrofest. Thank you. Uh, and I, uh, the reason I've stopped here is because uh, I was rather excited about this rather large chunk of steel here. Tell me a little bit about it. Yes, we decided a few years ago that we needed to um, redesign the telescope mounting because um, there re really isn't anything um, suitable for large telescopes. And I mean something in the region of 50 kilograms. Um, that's the optical.
school payload assembly. Um, so I, we've set about uh, designing from scratch really and uh, putting engineering practices um, into a, a nice drawing, uh, which I've done, um, created um, all the elements that you see here before you. Yeah, it's basically an English mounting, but I've shrunk the north and the south piers um, together so that it's now in a C shape. So for people to understand what we mean by an English mounting, we've got a, a, a sort of a northern polar attachment and a, a southern polar attachment um, with sort of a young, uh, Sort of, uh, what's the word for it? The yoke mounting, isn't it? It's, it's more C shape. C shape, yes. Yes. So this will be aligned to the pole clearly along with axis there. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Pole axis is up here. Yeah, that's right, okay. Not exactly the sort of thing that you'd be taking out to the field with you, I assume. Um, well, it is portable, <laughs> just. Um, you can break it down into several parts. Right, okay. uh, so uh, the biggest lump is about 25 kilos, which is like uh, an EQ6 um, okay. equatorial head. All oh, right, so not so bad at all, really. Not, not, no, not really. Um, the, the beauty of it is that um, I've got two bearings on the RA axis. Mm. So when you mount your telescope up here, mm -hmm. um, yes, it's got to overhang on the deck axle, yep. but then the whole of the deck axle load is supported between two bearings. Yes. And that, that means that you've got stability and rigidity, um, and provided you make it right, yep. with the right bearings, then um, you get super smooth operation yes. and absolutely no wobble. And certainly when I tried moving it a second ago, it was incredibly smooth, I've got to say. So is that obviously handmade on, on to order, I assume? Uh, yes, it is. We yeah. can um, tailor it to suit various types. We're thinking of um, bigger worm wheel sets. So th these are just dummies. We didn't right. have time to get uh, the teeth put on for the show. <laughs> but uh, these are eight and a half inch. We can do ten inch and down to six inch. All right. So if one of our members wanted to buy one of these, what's the price they're looking at? Well, it's six and a half thousand plus VAT uh, oh, okay. for the the basic model. Okay. And we can do um, we can fit encoders on for another one and a half thousand. Okay. Well, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. So what do you think of these, Joseph? Yeah, very nice. <laughs> Somebody's uh, not yeah, sure which firm has just done these. Yeah. I find it interesting because the, the colours have been emphasised in these. Uh, Myself, I prefer these slightly more subdued, but uh, somebody's trying to turn it into pieces of art on people's walls. We started from the, ra the wrong direction. Uh, starting from the price is very difficult to convince you to buy it. So. Reasonable, but I'm at the top of North London, so my, my seeing is too So this is the uh, the new EQ6 R mount. I know it's another one upstairs on these. A couple of points about it. Firstly, it's got some definitely beefed up uh, screws, or sort of bolts, sorry, on the uh, on the altitude and uh, uh, axis there. Sorry, on the uh, equatorial setting. And we've also got uh, a new dial to tell you what your uh, degree setting for north or south is. Slightly different uh, layouts on the actual. Uh, panel, although it's got the same bits and pieces on it. It's got a nice handle on the side there that you can carry it with more easily. Uh, having got an EQ6, I would suggest that uh, one of the biggest problems with the old one is that there are right uses to carry around because there's nothing to actually grab hold of. Um, and I understand from uh, uh, the review I read in one of the magazines that the internal gearing is far better made than the old one used. Having said that, mine does quite a good, good job with three star alignment and take you to where I'm looking at, so uh, I'm not sure if I want to fork out 1,249 when I got mine for second hand for 600 quid. So we're now in the, uh, the attic store with their latest range of cameras. So what exposures are these? Are they sort of third? Well, these are flat fields, so it depends on what the illumination is. This one's quite popular. We definitely use a head there. Interestingly, Joseph was attracted to this one. I think he harbours a desire to become an astrophotographer. We've been trying to explain to him star trailing and the need for a good mount. 
what it is. But it's good. Uh, and on here's a demonstration of Attic, which uh, did actually earlier on show with the Star Trek, and it looks like that's uh, gone past that bit at the moment. Good to see you again, Brian. Thank you. Uh, last year you were telling me about your uh, uh, binocular mount there, uh -huh. and I believe you brought a new version along. Yes, uh, I was asked to look at uh, loading the giant binoculars on uh, available on the market today, so uh, this is the product that I've made to do that. I see that there's an extra, count extra counterweight on the bottom. There are more counterweights on the bottom, and also a longer extension counterweight to balance the binoculars. All right, okay, there's a nice handle at the top. Well, yeah, yeah, brilliant. The handle's lowered down so that you can uh, go to the zenith. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So it's a very usable bit of kit for anybody that wants. Very to smooth. Try. Very smooth. Yeah. I think it's definitely a space in the market for one of these. Yeah. So oh, good then. What's the damage for one of these? How much is it going to cost? Uh, if it's bought with the uh, binocular package, then it's through Altair or John Timmins at uh, Peak to Valley, and that would be uh, as it is on that board there. Yeah. Um, if I make these for a person that already has some binoculars, yep. they'd be £400 for the £400 a week, yeah. £400 gotcha. yeah. Uh, and obviously you get your own uh, tripod. Tripod, of course, yeah. 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 So it's not a bad deal for a quick for one of those big ones. No. Uh, and the smaller one, how much are we talking about? Yeah, absolute margin. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for telling me about that. No problem, thank so you. Great to see you again. Thanks very much. Hi, I'm here with uh, Nicholas uh, from MPE, and uh, we've got a rather exciting product that I've come across here. I'm excited about it, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's a rotating turret. Uh, you load up all your eyepieces that you want to use during the day, or during the night, um, and then you just give it a spin when you need to change. So you could load up with CCDs, your SLR, um, different magnifications, whatever you want. <laughs> change your mind about what you want to look at, just flick it around. Uh, there's also at the front a two inch filter slot so you can change the filters quickly as well. Oh, that's if you great to do it, isn't it? Absolutely. Observations. Yeah. Remember. Uh, so how long have you been producing this particular product for? This is the first event we've been to where the full, absolute, complete finished version is done. Right. Um, but we've been working on this for about two years now. Oh gosh, and where, where's your company based? Uh, between Nottingham and Leeds. Between Leeds, right, okay. So uh, let's go back to the product itself. So we've got, so is it six, uh, yep. six slots, is it? Three two inch and three 1.25 inch uh, yep. eyepieces. They're all par focal, so you set up the focus at the beginning before you start doing any viewing. And then once they're all in the same focal plane, you can use the gross focus yep. to change them as you need to. Right, indeed, yes. So I suppose what uh, the members of our group will be thinking now is how much is this going to put them back if they buy one of these? Uh, normally it's uh, 1,995 pounds, but for today and tomorrow it's 10% uh, off. But that comes with the turret in the case, which is a very hardy industrial case, yep. um, and filter holder as well. Brilliant. And of course, uh, no one needs to buy a diagonal ever again. No, no, it's a spinning diagonal, so you're done. Set it up, off you go. Well, I wish you all the best for the uh, rest of the conference. Thank you. I hope it's of interest. So do I. I've caught Ed here spending money. I don't know if Lillian knows about this. <laughs> she does. But there we are, the card machine coming out. And what has he found? We've got uh, optical vision up here. And he's uh, found himself an eyepiece. One of the uh, sky panoramas. Just sky check watcher. the price and, and see your pin, please. Price down from 129 to 75. Okay. We're in a wide angle eyepiece, that's right, isn't it? That's right, yep. Yeah. Have a go with your different scopes. So, uh, yeah, hi Ed, we were just commenting, weren't we, together about what it is we've been seeing around here. And uh, so what, what do you think of the highlights of the, the stores at the moment? Well, every time we come here, there seems to be less and less bargains, and the, the price is, there's, there's very few show bargains. There's, um, seen probably 10% on some of the things, but most of, the, most of the stores seem to be selling stuff at full price, which is a real shame. Yeah, it doesn't seem. And you were commenting that there's very few eyepieces around, mm. which is just weird. Yeah. The previous years, it's really been, uh, uh, really been eyepieces been on the big mm. ones. Yeah. Solar scopes seem to be hardly any at all, given the clips coming no. up next yeah. this year. Um, from, from what they were saying last year, the, the, the bulk of all the production for the solar, solar scopes has been shipped over to America, and there's very few coming over to this country at all. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 
there. That, yeah. that makes sense, wouldn't it? Yeah. And the other thing I've noticed in previous years that there seems to be less of at the moment is uh, mounts. There's a few around, but it just doesn't seem to be uh, a sense of uh, pushing any particular item at all. No. I, I came to the show this year with, it, with, with the expectation of buying um, a little travel Altaz mount, mm. and I've bought the only one in the show. Yeah. It's a nice one though. <laughs> nice one though. <laughs> <laughs> the price wasn't bad. No, no. But uh, no, a good show to come to. The oh, absolutely, yeah. The lectures are fantastic and they always are. Yeah. And they have been brilliant again yeah. this morning, absolutely yeah. brilliant. Uh, and, uh, still fun looking around. But, uh, oh, yeah. I, I don't find myself, maybe because I've got so much stuff already, but I don't, don't find myself with any real desire to buy anything at all. No, I've got an open checkbook with nothing to spend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we are, okay. That's right, yeah. yeah. So here with uh, Martin and Graham uh, from the International Astronomy Show, just telling the dates have just been set. So what are the dates, guys? The 13th and 14th of October, 2017. And it's back in Stonely again? Uh, it's back, back in Stonely. Stonely, yes. Same yeah. old place. Yeah, brilliant. So, so when do you think the tickets are likely to be available? We should have the lecture program confirmed by uh, early May. So uh, probably the end of May we'll have lecture tickets and entrance tickets on sale uh, for you know general admittance. Uh, and also from your society point of view, we do do a discount for yeah. group bookings. Yeah, the ten percent uh, entrance fee, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's a saving for you. Yeah. 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 So Pardon? How much is the entrance fee? Six pound. Six pound, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, so it's, uh, in terms of dates there, the 13th and 14th of October at Stonely Park.